It was a big Sunday of football. We react to all the studs, all the duds, and break down some of the news, of course. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Subscribe right now. Leave us some comments and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Monday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. I think the hardest part of the Monday show is not talking all about the games before we hit mm, record yeah because we're all you know we were together for the majority of the day watching the games but then you have the evening games and you then you get the whole like stat avalanche that comes through the weekend on on social media and then you get in here and uh you know al and and the judge we start talking about our leagues and then it's like hit record hit record because so much happened this weekend you don't want to waste all the good stuff no. pre-show. No, and we all have so many different thoughts about what's transpired. We're three weeks in. We got two Monday night football games still to be played. <laughs> we we had some absolute madness over the weekend. We have to react to. Today's a studs and duds show. We've got NFL news, injury news to talk about. We also have Monday Punday. And I was telling Jason this morning, on average, for the first two weeks of the season. I looked through the puns, 80, 90% negative puns, maybe a few people happy, content. This week, it was all flipped. Yeah. This week, it was 70% positive. This week was drunk. I mean, this <laughs> was insane. Usually, you know, our, our footy awards at the end of the year, which stay tuned. Uh, make sure you're there for that episode. We have like the best fantasy performance of the year. And over the course of the year, we have like f just four or five monstrous fantasy finishes. This week we had like 10 monsters. <laughs> it was insane. The best fantasy performance may have been on everybody's bench. <laughs> like yeah, the we'll get like there. The best, but I'm saying like one of the best games of the year was just Chilling on the waiver wire or on people's benches. The numbers I saw was about 0.6% of people played that player. And we'll talk <laughs> about him shortly because there is a lot to talk about with Mr. H.A. But, like I said, there's a lot going on. Follow us on social media. At the FF Ballers over on X, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. And the community is jointhefoot.com. Uh, I wanted to give a quick shout-out, genuinely. Uh, the DFS pass this week. Oh, mercy. Matthew Betts and uh, Kyle the Borgogan and the community there. Uh, it's been a really good year. Uh, I think that the team takes the right approach over there with the DFS pass. And um, we had more success this weekend. If you don't know what that is, that is our exclusive season long resource. And it's really turned into. You know, there, there are tools. There's the, the DFS DFS optimizer, which is brand new this year. It's awesome. But then there is the, like, Discord community you get access to, which is becoming more and more invaluable to reacting to news and to talking about um, DFS plays. And it's just a lot of fun. And we charge one price for the year, which we should probably rethink. Yeah, we really but, should. Um, I'm working on it, guys. <laughs> and for the first time ever, if we want you to go experience that. It's normally $50 for the year. There is a code you can put in if you want to grab it right now, and it goes through the playoffs. That code is WINNER23. Well, the Win code doesn't go through the playoffs. Uh, the code is limited time. Yes. The DFS pass goes through the playoffs. There we go. And uh, if you were confused, like Mike. But WINNER23 is the code at DFSPass.com. Just to be a part of that, give it a try. Let us know what you think. And the, uh, the props over there in the DFS pass – are currently running at 69% for the season. Which that, is super nice. nice. So you may have some... Probably what, unsustainable. Some regression. That, I mean, <laughs> we went, you know, uh, 
seven and three seven again this week. Seven and three again yeah. this week. Just ridiculous. So congrats to the team over there for the hard work. Really love what they're doing. And um, let's get into the reactions in the most sophisticated manner possible. Yes. It would be ridiculous not to start with the 70-point brigade. Tua Infinity and beyond. Oh, Devon, my bench, A-Chain. <laughs> yes. But also, he is divine, A-Chain. Yes. Uh, Raheem, most of the TDs. <laughs> yes, and the most popular submission, of course, Raheem must start. Oh, who's that? Is that Winneth Walker? What? That one's terrible. Oh, he's a winner. Adam feeling young again. Yes, he is, hey, Jason. Hey, guys, it's me, Adam. It's Adam Thielen That's here. That's right. That's a better voice. Uh, how about living La Porta Loca? <laughs> Alexander the Great? Mike. Oh, yeah. Keenan all in? Yes. <laughs> that what, did I read it right? Yeah. yeah it's very okay. simple. And there were some bad, like uh, Derrickety Henry. Beyond Robinson. <laughs> or Br- Brees Stahl. Bust Edwards. Um, the guy, the come Gus on. Bust. Yeah, that's, that's not on. nice. But uh, what about what about Jahan Notson? Yes. Uh, followed up by Justin. Get off the field. <laughs> Just, oh, boy. Justin, shield your eyes. It's bad to watch. Yeah, I mean, there are some, you know, we're three weeks in. Uh-huh. Three weeks is, uh, that's what we call a sample size, right? That's enough time. It's a three-week sample size is what we call that. that. That's uh, Three weeks is what it takes to become on fire, right? Yes. The NBA jam rules here. NBA jam rules. So we've we've got some uh, decisions to be made. I know in the aforementioned Justin Fields situation, I know that Al Borland and others with Justin Fields are making drop decisions now. Oh, yeah. So so that's that'll be uh, – Hey, it was week six last year. So if you're holding on to fields, you just got a couple more weeks. When the when the turnaround yeah. happened and he went nuclear the second half? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, Justin Fields is really, really interesting because he wasn't good last year as a quarterback, but obviously he was um, you know, a league winner for some, but brought people to the playoffs for fantasy purposes. It was great. Started the year just terrible. This year looks worse than he did last year to me, yeah. which is really disappointing with – uh, DJ Moore in tow. The offense and the play calling looks as bad as his they, uh, ability to let go of the football on time and in rhythm. It, everything looks like a calamity. Um, that being said, you know, Mike, you were bringing up, you believe this Chiefs defense yeah. is fully legitimate, super for real. They've shut down everyone. They didn't give up anything to other good options. Um Fields is, is someone that will be hitting waiver wires this week for sure in uh, some we- leagues. If he hits a waiver wire in my league, there is no chance. I mean, would I would I, pick him? I would pick him up. I would not be playing him, sure. but I would pick him up absolutely to to stash because if if I'm picking him up, I feel confident that I have a starting option and I can just find out what's going to happen for Justin Fields over the next couple of weeks, which. To what me, if it's, I, what to if me I told it's landmine you? country. It, it, it certainly because could Because be. I don't think you play him if you pick him up. Which means he has an explosive game on your bench at some point, and then you put him back in there. And I what didn't if, know. I didn't know the floor was this low, Mike. What if I told you next week he it's plays Denver. the Denver yeah, Broncos? No, I know, I know, but I'm not doing it anymore because I I predicted a bounce back in week two, and I predicted a bounce back in week three. So I am now going to learn from said said mistakes. Any quarterback can have a monster game. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot. Just ask Daniel Jones. Yeah, so I, I, that's a disappointing – we'll get there. We'll get there to the duds. I guess we need to talk about some of this injury news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, let's start with the headline that uh, just formally broke. Uh, Mike Williams uh, confirmed. Man. Torn his ACL out for the season. That stinks. He was having a big game. He had had a – 13 target week the week before it seemed like things were starting to click he finished as the wide receiver eight this week had a monster touchdown from keenan allen yeah you just had to find the right quarterback to get him the ball right <laughs> but um devastating news i mean at this point we've we've gone through the injury to austin eckler now in this offense mm-hmm. and uh they did manage to get the w in spite of themselves to some degree they tried to not they did brandon staley I think you're starting to see a man turn inside out in his own brain. Uh, 
But Mike Williams out for the year. We had Eckler go down, and it looked like Josh Kelly, which, look, should have been in the puns with another Josh Smelly. Um, They've, but, they, the, but the backup didn't come through, is my point, in Los Angeles because the offense changed yeah. fundamentally. So you, you look at this, and it'd be easy to quickly react, and you probably should be picking up a Quentin Johnston to see what happens. Joshua Palmer's probably the under-the-radar pickup that people aren't going to pay attention to. Yeah. But it it might be hard to expect those guys to come in and put up what Mike Williams was doing. Yeah, I think your point is is important that what this team did when they lost Eckler was not keep the same system. They said, okay, our backup running back isn't that good. They went from in neutral passing situations. When Eckler was there, they were 30th uh, because they were running the ball very successfully. And when Eckler has been gone, they are first in pass rate over expectations. So – this is a team that changed because of their personnel. They lose Mike Williams. They're going to change because of their personnel, not just say, Quentin Johnston, you're the new Mike Williams. Now, he will get an opportunity to say, hey, I can be the next Mike Williams, but he's got to prove that. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I'd be curious, quick reaction on, on who you would pick up because to me, like Josh Palmer had a good game. He was four for 66 and a touchdown. Um, Comes down to what does my team need? If I'm looking at, my I have a two flex league and my second flex has not been what I need it to be. I'm going Josh Palmer. If my starting roster is legit, locked in for the next couple of weeks, then I'm going to go with shoot, Johnston. Just shoot for the move. Yeah, yeah. Hope pick him up and hope that he overtakes Palmer over the second half. Yeah, Palmer. What we know about Palmer is he can he can go out there and have a decent game, but he's not that dude. We've seen that with so many of these players over the last couple of years, the Van Jeffersons, the KJ Osborns, they can go out there and be a successful wide receiver three, but when given the opportunity to really show that there's something special, they're just, they're just not that guy, and I don't think Palmer's that guy. And I'd love to sit here and recommend Gerald Everett, but unfortunately it's a shared Parham. situation because the yeah, Parham burglar yep. stealing I touches. I like it. Yeah, that was a Kyle special. Oh! I'll give him a shout-out That's there. his first good one. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Kyle. Love you, Kyle. Uh, the other news this weekend, Jamal Williams went on the IR with the hamstring. And uh, so Kendra Miller, Tony Jones, Taysom Hill, and uh, all your other friends. Well, Al Alvin Kamara. Yeah, Kyle Kamara is back now. Uh, Deion Jackson was released, waived. Trey Sermon moved up to the active roster. No one – I mean, it doesn't matter because there's just one workhorse in the, oh, bu dude, in the I, building. I can't wait. I can't wait to tell everyone how great Zach Moss is, <laughs> how well he's been playing, and how I have completely – I don't want you to. Exactly. I want no. you to no, stay, okay. stay no, no, no. right where you at. Oh, he's great, guys. And he's going to be – Oh, real. now he's trying to reverse engineer ah. Zach Moss to disaster. Look, he has looked really good. That's not even a joke. He has <laughs> made how about that nice catch? receptions. Yeah, that, that touchdown catch was special. Um, there were plays I don't where know he if, was. I don't know if it's the bit still where Andy. he was I'm very tackled. I can't, I can't tell. There were there were plays where he should have been tackled four yards behind the line of scrimmage. He got to four positive yards. He has looked really good, and I was so super wrong about him being an average player. Okay, all right. And going forward, you know, I'm happy. I'm just gonna eat those words. And yeah, so I'm so happy yeah. about that. Nine uh, eleven swap though in your favor. Yeah. Uh no, the, my favorite part of the weekend. For, well, was well, Zach you, was yelling Zach Moss's name and yelling Adam Thielen's name. Those were the only two things I truly enjoyed this week. If you're gonna bring up the trade, Andy, the the nine eleven swap where I uh, traded you Zach Moss, it was really to pick up Devon A Chain, which I'm happy to have right now. How many points did he score you this week? Fifty no, no, on no, my bench. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but in the event of a tie. Right. Oh, no After chance tonight, I lose. Jason's got it locked up. Derek Carr, AC joint sprain. He's going to miss some time. You're going to see Jameis Winston at quarterback. Gus Edwards concussion. Yeah, he was cooking too. Hey, what do you know? Rashad Bateman exited the game with an injury. Yeah. So, there you go. This guy's body does not want to play. Zach Wilson is going to remain the team's starter. The New York Jets. It, what are they doing? The, the Jets <laughs> and Bears fans, I'm sorry. It, things are so bad for you that you in this building we have a diehard to the grave lifetime Packer fan in Al Borland who literally feels bad for you <laughs> it's true I was just telling Andy he that was this morning. just telling me that which I don't think they want to hear that that's so patronizing for the bear fan <laughs> right but 
This was you, a good weekend for the Bears. Why you think the the Cardinals won? The oh, Texans sure, won. Sure. Both of those picks are you know maintained by the Arizona Cardinals, and so I know we've got a we've got a close uh, friend, Chris, who um, is a diehard Bears fan, and we're just like we're rooting against each other, but in the opposite of normal. It's like I, we're saying go Bears, my team's going to lose. Cardinals, yeah, no, my team's going to so lose. It's a good, it's a good. Well, weekend. I, and I told you guys I've completely changed on the Arizona Cardinals approach because I realized this week, and and maybe through the first two weeks. I am not rooting for the number one pick at all. Oh, okay. I don't mind if Houston loses, but they're not going to get the number one pick either. C.J. Stroud's legit. But it would be silly to root for it for either of those teams right now because they're not that team. Both of those teams are much better than the number one pick, in my opinion. Um, Houston ended up dominating Jacksonville yet again. I mean, that's a whole other discussion on what you do with Jacksonville's offensive pieces. But Arizona's, unfortunately for you guys, Yes, thank you. A good competitive football team. They they were on the cusp of winning the first two weeks. They dominated Dallas this past weekend. And Joshua Dobbs, if you were the quarterback of the New York football Jets, you'd be 3-0. and I mean, I think the Jets would be 3-0 and if they had Josh Dobbs at quarterback. There are so many better options than Zach Wilson. Well, wait two weeks and trade for Joshua Dobbs, Jets fans. Yeah, with Kyler potentially coming back. He yeah. could come back. Uh, he's, he's post the timeline now uh, where he would be able to be back in – within the normal timeline um from the injury recovery correct can and I, then he has one week left of ineligibility being on the pup can i try to persuade you to root for the cardinals the rest no. of the season if i kyler, think i can make the case for you if kyler comes back we week five if he's back immediately following his minimum stay on the pup then i'll, I'll root okay mike you're not on that side i just i don't want mediocrity forever okay yeah, that makes sense. Like a, to me, to me, a six-win like, team is that's a. I think a six-win team is that's the worst. I think if that's you go case if scenario. you go backwards with the, you got a new GM, new head coach, and then you go backwards and you lose all your games, that's worse for the team. Even if you get the number one pick, because you know what's the net gain of the four free agents you pick up because you've built a culture and you start winning football games. It's really hard to bring people in and get them on board, especially in Arizona, where what did we get ranked thirty-second in like treating your players and making them buy their cafeteria yeah. food like you have to change the culture and i'd rather have the four free agents at this point because they're playing hard for gannon whenever i hear the like that we make players pay for their cafeteria food it's unbelievable it sounds like some joke that do you know how much they eat jason football players eat so much food and do you know how much <laughs> money they make they can afford to pay yeah. for their cafeteria yes. food from us the Arizona Cardinals. This is not a Cardinal show, but I just, right. I, just, I have switched. I was excited, and it's fun to root for your team. That's fair. Uh, it was fun yesterday. <laughs> uh, Joe Burrow expected to be a game time decision tonight. I I think he's playing. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it. They they say that he is campaigning to start. They also said that this morning in his you know warm ups things were good. He's progressing in the right direction. There was also a report they could put him on the IR. So. Hold your breath. He, he's a gamer. I think he's going to be out there. And I think, uh, you know, this is make or break season time. Cincinnati is not competing in that division with how Pittsburgh's playing. Uh, the Ravens lost, they're which is helpful three. for the Bengals. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you're down to, I believe, after tonight, just three teams will be 3 0 in the entire NFL. So it's been uh, pretty wide open, and anybody seems to be able to win any given week. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, there were a lot of them, Whew. and it's fun to talk about players delivering the goods. For yeah, months. baby. Justin Herbert. Quarterback one on the season. Is that true? That is true. Really? Yeah. It is really, really true. One on and, the season, that and he make was since. Well, yeah, it does because he scored the most fantasy points. I don't believe that. <laughs> you can, I'm, okay. I'm gonna go look. I already bet it this morning. Did it's you? True. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we've got quarterbacks that haven't played this evening, but those would be Baker, Stafford, yeah, he's, Burrow. He's, he's going to finish as the number one. The the only one that would but have had a chance would be Anthony Richardson, and he's obviously so he's ahead of Tua. Correct. Interesting. We're through three weeks. Yeah, we're through three weeks. All right, I'm seeing it's still Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that doesn't. It definitely has to be Cousins. Are you guys looking in six point or four point? 
Oh. Four point. I got what Jason's got. Herbert, number one. Ah, uh, okay. So four point okay. league Herbert sitting at number one, huh? Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. What are the top three then? Is it Herbert? It goes Justin Herbert, Kirk Cousins, Tua in four point. So Herbert was 40 for 47, 405 yards. It's the first 400 game, uh, 400 yard game of his career. And he was vultured on a bomb touchdown to Mike Williams. <laughs> Tua Tunga Vailoa, 309 and four. He was 23 of 26. He went 16 for 16 in the first half. And they didn't have Jalen Waddell and scored 70. Half of his touchdown passes were right handed. Tua <laughs> plays left handed at the quarterback position. That's an interesting we're fact. Were both of his shuffle well, passes? Were, they were identical plays. You want to talk about embarrassing Broncos fans? I'm sorry, but the exact same play in the same formation. A lot was uh, a lot of uh, you know bad reviews were given to the Bears' offense last week for running the same screen from the same formation twice, and that's why it was intercepted. The Dolphins were like, "You guys can't stop us doing anything. I don't want to show you any new plays." Hey, just do just yeah. do that one that scored a touchdown last time. Do that again, and they did it, and it scored a touchdown again. Uh yeah that that game. I mean, just broadly reacting to that Miami game. You ever seen anything like it that? It was so fun. It was a blast. I've never seen mm -hmm. anything like it. I turned to Mike. It was, I don't know, I think we were starting the fourth quarter, and I was like, I don't think I've ever seen something like this. He goes, that's because you haven't. I mean, it, I wasn't alive in 1966 the last so, time someone put up 70 points. So I will then ask the question, coming from the uh, the Foot Clan and one who was pulverized by this matchup, was it fun because you were not facing Raheem Mostert in any leagues? <laughs> that was helpful. Because I was. Brooks mm. was. And it was not fun. Yeah. It was, in fact, super frustrating that they kept turning the ball over in positive area for the Dolphins and then couldn't stop Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert had four touchdowns. <laughs> and he did not have... He, he did not stand alone as the only one with four touchdowns. A-Chain had four as well. Absurd. On your bench. And you really you you really thought about that decision, that, too. That one was difficult because most people, I would never blame anyone for not having them in their lineup. He hasn't done anything yet, and um, hopefully you have better options. The morning of, I messaged my co-manager and said, hey, I want to put Devon A-Chain in over Algier. Talk me off of this. I said, I think I'm the only person that would actually start him. So he was very persuasive then. No. He oh. responded and said, I'm a, I'm actually okay with that. I can see the path, and then I left him oh, there. And I can, you hold on. chickened out. I mean, I can quote. Uh, I can quote Jason. I mean, I've got the I got the receipts over here. He sent oh, really? me a message too. I mean, I said, "Who are you playing at running back?" He said, "I have to play two of Algier, A Chain, and Min Miller." I said, "Oh, I didn't see Kendra Miller was on your IR, stashed away." He says, "I can make a case for any of them. Seems silly to bench Algier, but I expect a putrid game." Mm -hmm. And I got it. <laughs> so that's cool it, but the nice thing is you know sometimes you make a decision it doesn't affect your actual outcome no this one of course did because he scored 50 <laughs> points so I lost and would have won but whatever we we move on it's it's still good like this is always one of those things as a fantasy manager yep. you watch a guy on your bench go off and it's a real bittersweet thing because you you obviously want those points you want to win but it's always a good thing you can't root against your guys on the bench as much as you want to, because as much as you were, as uh, well, you, you, know. you were actively <laughs> despising every snap he took. I was reacting I, to. It. I was cut to the core, but I was also happy. I was thrilled because the more that he proves himself, the more opportunity he'll get in Here's future weeks. Here's the real challenge: fifty-four points or fifty points, whatever it was in your league format. Devon H. Obviously, the the. The Broncos are going to be the worst team against running backs the rest of the season, no matter what they do at this point. They were terrible going into the game. They were terrible in the game. Vance Joseph is trending on Twitter to be fired. The team is a disaster. They give up nine, 90 fantasy points to running backs. Yeah, I mean, they gave up eight touchdowns to running backs in a game. So that game, the nuclear explosion, the Miami offense was already number one in football. They're going to be the number one in football for a long time. Here's what I'm saying, and we're into the running backs already because we, we, we have some, you know, Mahomes, Cousins, uh, start of the week, Jordan Love, big games. Into the running backs, Mostert and A-Chain. They travel to a Buffalo team next week 
that just put up 28 fantasy points. They had nine sacks. They had four interceptions. They made Sam Howell look like a Pop Warner quarterback. Mm -hmm. And the question is going to be, do you just play a chain mm -hmm. as a reward for the bench uh, performance of the year? Or is this a, this is a higher stakes, closer game? Is Divisional matchup. Are the snaps going to be there? I want to know what – I mean, your team is different. Your team has no running backs. Yeah, my team, A-Chain, will be out there. But but do you I, think that that's going to be the recommendation this week, gentlemen? I think that you should put A-Chain in your lineup. I, I was pro A-Chain the whole offseason. I'm going to put a wrinkle in this. Uh, okay, so. okay, okay. Savan Ahmed, Monday or whatever, Wednesday's practice, he's back. He's practicing in full. Well, certainly, I would. Uh, if, if Ahmed is – back and active for the game no the, the the case that I was about to make is that if you've got just Moster and a chain I don't think they want to give either player you know a, a too too much of a workload they will split evenly and my goodness you can't have two faster options out there and when you've got a guy if he's going to touch the ball let's say 12 times if he gets 12 carries against the bills you only need one sliver of an opportunity for a breakaway touchdown run we saw it a bunch uh, obviously against a much easier defense and um, Sean McDermott has taken over play calling on defense and their defense has looked excellent since that's happened so I, I certainly am not expecting a monster big blow-up game I won't start him over everyone but assuming that it's Moster and A-Chain as the only two active running backs that that are that you pre presume are going to get work then yeah, I think both of those players need to be started. This Dolphins offense has not been able to be stopped. They have creative play calling. They get guys open in space. They've got a good run scheme. Uh, I think you've got to stay the, in the flames. I certainly think that's the right call for this week. It will be something to watch when you get Ahmed back and and Jeff Wilson back in week four, and then A-Chain's performing, and then Mostert is running back one on the season, I think. The what? Mostert? Yes. Is Mostert the RB1? I believe so, yes. So, I mean, and, what, and a, what a – it's not going to be 70 points a week is all I'm saying. No, but, no, no. But I do think you, everything you said was accurate. And if you look last week, the, 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 the Bills' defense was incredible, absolutely shut down the Manders. But Brian Robinson was – he was having a fine game against them. I, he was 10 for 70 on the ground. They just had to pass the ball and couldn't pass the ball to Manders. They could only pass the ball to Bills. All right, uh, quick break. Back with some more running back studs. <music> Kenneth Walker, the third, 18 for 97. Two more touchdowns, three targets, three for 59 through the air. He's the running back three on the season, and he might just get Mike Wright a victory. Uh, he saved me, at least from the shame. That from, is correct. I was in... I was in a, a dark place for, well, for well, fantasy face well. hmm. We had three very high-performing DraftKings squads, and I ended up at the bottom. Mm. Yes, that's, uh, that's a shame. It's not me this week, suckers! I know, I know. It, did uh, you get first, or am I, I did. first? Okay. It Just looked, barely. Oh, Kenneth Walker almost got you there. Kenneth Walker is what got me the shame. Because we were going into – I was going into the afternoon games with the Cardinals D, which performed quite well <laughs> – and Mike had Kenneth Walker, and I had like a 20-point lead or 27-point lead. But Kenneth Walker said, I care not of your lead. I'm going to score two more touchdowns, and he's having a great season. Zachary Moss, 30 carries, 30 carries. 122, three targets and a touchdown. He has everything to the offense. They play the Rams, Tennessee, and Jacksonville. Uh, he's going to be so good, guys. Now, you have to mean it, Jason, for you to reverse the curse. <laughs> uh, Christian McCaffrey, big week. James Conner, he's so good. I told you I needed more from McCaffrey. You know the the Cardinals <laughs> ran for more rushing yards in the first half than uh, against Dallas than they had given up in a first half of football since 1992. They they ran for over 180 yards yeah. in the first half. They James Conner is 14 for 98 and a touchdown. He is the RB seven. It's nice to see him performing, and the team is better than like the offseason narrative means nothing once the season starts. For any of these teams. Yeah. Just ask Justin Fields. Jonathan Gannon is a comical, cringy uh, character. Ca yeah, yeah, yeah. Comical, cringy character. The the, the triple C, if, you know, as we call it. Uh, mm -hmm. Seems we, like yeah. a, seems like a, might be a good coach. Maybe. Still a little early, but. 
the players are playing hard for him. They have no Buda Baker. They have no personnel on offense. They're backup quarterback, and James Conner's getting it done. Jerome Ford looked good-ish. Uh, Ish. You he can't run just, against Tennessee, so let's – And let's, he couldn't 18 yards on oh 10 gosh. carries, so he couldn't get to two yards a carry. He had two, two touchdowns. touchdowns. Yeah. Do, do you trade high on that with Hunt's uh, snap share likely to increase over time and Baltimore by week, San Francisco seems like a bad run? Like, I would probably trade Jerome Ford. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think you can make the case for it with, with Baltimore, which Baltimore's defense right now. I mean, obviously, Zach Moss played good. We were expecting Baltimore to be better. They were – trashed with injuries they they came out and had so many starters out for that game lost that game um but yeah baltimore bye week san francisco if you think you can get something good y yeah I, I would capitalize despite being destroyed by houston travis Etienne did have a good game mike start of the week uh four for 50 through the air which was nice to see 19 for 88 on the ground and uh shout out to alexander yeah madison. baby alexander madison had the Best, worst, best game that I've seen in a while. 20 for 93, seven targets. What do you mean best, worst Well, game? he means – What do you think I he mean, He means Mike? a bunch of drops and 22 fumbles that didn't count. Yeah, you were watching the game screaming at the screen. <laughs> Madison had more fumbles that didn't count as fumbles that I've ever seen yeah, in my life. He was expertly timing his fumbles this week. Yeah, you know, I would call that best, worst, best. That's, that's fair. And also, sandwich. also includes a – uh, catastrophic play by Kirk Cousins where Madison was wide open for a drag route touchdown. Yeah, he was, getting, wide he was too busy getting tackled. Open. Uh, but Madison had a nice game with the uh, – Does that make with, it messier for you guys of being kind of a, more on the Cam Akers side? Nope. It doesn't make it – It makes it easier to trade Madison. Sh sure, yeah. I mean, I, I still think this is going to come in and – But a nice game. 20 for 93 is a good game. And be a split. What what it makes it harder on is deciding to bench Madison this coming week because, he, you know, whenever someone has a good game, if Cam Akers is active next game, I I think the right thing to do is to just put Alexander Madison on your bench, but it's hard to do after a, after I think a quality flex game. He's probably flexible. Yeah, I, I'll bet. He, he can certainly toes. touch his toes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, Keenan, here's 20 targets. Keenan Allen, 20 targets, 18 for 215. Didn't score through the air, guys, but he did have a... for 215. 18 for 215. That is good enough. Check out. Be done. Nah, let's throw a 49-yard touchdown. <laughs> he did everything. He is the only player in NFL history with three games of 15-plus receptions. Plays the Raiders, uh, we'll call it a defense. And then uh, the bye week... Loses Mike Williams? Yeah, I mean Keenan Allen. The only the only person that can stop Keenan Allen is Keenan Allen himself. Yeah, if he gets injured. If Otherwise, he, get injured, he is going to be the steal of the draft. We saw this last year. I mean, we saw it at the when he came back from injury. He was the wide receiver four in fantasy football the entirety of the the second half of last season, and all he's done is pick up right there twenty targets. I mean, this is this is some puka nakua stuff that Keenan's doing. He is the number one. He was the number one wide receiver last week against Tennessee. He is the number one wide receiver this week against Minnesota. And he caught twenty six passes in two weeks on thirty targets. And it's probably not changing because t handing the ball off to Josh Kelly is not going to work. No. And no, Mike Williams. I mean, Keenan Allen's just going to get hyper targeted. Yeah. In, Enjoy in, the ride. In half point scoring right now Keenan Allen is the third highest player he has scored more fantasy points than quarterbacks I mean he's just in what format half PPR and in full PPR hide your children true man yeah I haven't even looked there I mean full PPR that is that is um, he is the number one highest scorer above everyone at all positions through three weeks <laughs> <laughs> wow okay uh, Congratulations if you have Keenan Allen right now. They do have an early bye week, and then you get um, – Which we we did have a, a ominous quote from the coaching staff talking about Austin Eckler. And they said, well, how's Eckler doing? And essentially the quote was something about, we'll see how he's doing over the next few weeks. Yeah. Which is – I don't like that word. If that, he rests this he, week and then has a bye week the next week, it makes it so much more likely that they don't push him out. The only reason to push him out now is if Mike Williams is gone and you feel like you need – you know your playmakers but they're playing the raiders like yeah so if again pay attention to the schedule we got a game this week and then but then they're on the bye week so resting eckler 
for the rest of the, for that week, it makes a lot of sense. I think if if you have no Eckler and you have Mike no Mike Williams next week, you play seven guys on Keenan Allen and you use you use the other four <laughs> for the rest of the team. You know this was a this was a really funny week for the no one can guard them even if they try story mm -hmm. because we we talked about that like Tyree Kill had on that touchdown like you don't have Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill had had. I don't know, 15 yards between him and the nearest defender on the touchdown pass. He went nine for 157. And then you had Devontae Adams, right? And Devontae Adams is the entire offense for uh, Las Vegas. And he had 20 targets and he was 13 for 172 and you can't stop him. And Justin Jefferson, like you should probably guard him and you can't stop him. He, ha he has the most yards through three weeks in the history of the NFL. And then Keenan Allen, you knew where the ball was going when it was crunch time. You can't stop him. So, this, this is what Mike's been saying for nine years. If you got a superstar, <laughs> yes. just target him every single play. Yeah. It works. Well, See what the, happens. The rules are conducive for that, and you can always get a penalty on those targets to your star receiver as well because they're the best at drawing them. It also is a – I mean, is this a testament to the power of the wide receiver position in fantasy? Mm -hmm. because, Absolutely. you know, Devontae Adams, right, the doubts, uh, oh, Jimmy G, right. um, they didn't play good. Well, they didn't play well. Superman doesn't play good. Thank you. Or, or he does play good. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Course, Whatever, course. man. Uh, <laughs> Devontae Adams is not – he's too good to be stopped by a quarterback or a defense. Uh, I was as, – as we were watching the game last night, all I kept thinking is like, <laughs> of course. Like, anyone that doubted him this year – because, well, he's a little old. He's got a downgraded quarterback. It's like, we just did this. He was a little old. He got a downgraded quarterback and was dominant. Uh, he won't be stopped. And to speak to Justin Jefferson, you mentioned he, his yardage through three weeks most of all time. He is on pace for 2,600 receiving yards. And maybe this is the year he goes over 2,000 because they, they can't run the football. They don't want to. Yeah. and uh, Or win. They don't want to win either. Um. But those are big performances. Adam Thielen, 14 yes. targets, 11 oh. for 145 and 1. Now do you believe Andy Dalton was an upgrade, Jason? Yeah. 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 <laughs> for sure. I mean, he, he, got, yeah. he got catchable targets uh, all game. He's uh, also getting open a ton. I mean, you watch him, he's still getting open all over the field. 11 for 145 and 1. You can't doubt it. He's the wide receiver seven so far on the season. Um, I think this is – I still think it's – This is the peak probably. This is – this is the peak except, I will say this, Minnesota this week. Oh, oh that's good. Mm -hmm. Detroit the next week. Okay. And you're going to have to keep throwing the ball against Miami after that. So, I don't know. He, he's going to have eight to ten targets a week. It I mean, does seem automatic. that way. It does seem that and way. And rookie Jonathan Mingo left with a concussion. So, he's probably in a situation where he won't even be on the field next yeah, week. Yeah, DJ Chark could be a viable uh, flex play next he week. He could. He was four for eighty six and looked good and a touchdown. George, uh, Tank Dell five for one forty five and a touchdown. Hope you picked him up. Hope we hope we talked high enough about him on the waiver show. I know Mike, you hungry for more. You yeah. Tank yeah. Dell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 talked him up on that segment as well. His college stats. He is very open. Debo and Amari Cooper. Jason started the week seven for one sixteen. Jason, do you want to go off on that whistle? On the oh my <laughs> goodness! I I was like, what whistle? There was, if you did not see this game, there was one of the most egregious, wild, wacky, refing mishaps that I've ever seen. Like I was watching the game, and we've got a, we've got nine TVs going, and so there was no audio. You didn't know what was happening from sound. But here's what happened: there was this pass down the sideline. Amari Cooper somehow catches it. Looks like an impossible catch. He gets it. His defender basically falls down. He's wide open on the sideline. He starts running. A safety comes over. He jukes him. He's going. He's going up the sideline. He's going to run for a touchdown. He stops running. He starts jogging. He stops. He looks back. He's confused. The <laughs> defender looks around like, what's going on? And then he's like, Dude, should I keep running? He, so he runs to the end zone and scores. But the play was over. And the play was over because near the sideline, when the defender fell down, they, the ref, who was right there, Blew the whistle. Now, I understand you get things wrong, but 
He was a yard away from the sideline. I mean, okay, a foot and a half. This was not like a, oh, I can see green. This uh-huh. was like he did not approach the boundary. His foot was nowhere near it. And you it blew. It was really embarrassing. The, you blew the play dead, so you can't review it. You can't go back on it. Thankfully, he got another touchdown later, but he should have had an even bigger game than his 7 for 116 and it, 1. It felt like the ref had decided that. He's like, oh, no, Cooper's going to end up out of bounds here. So he just was already ready for that. But it was not even close. Sam Laporta, 11 targets, 8 for 84 in a touchdown, the most receptions in the first three games for a tight end in in, uh, history. And the number two tight end in fantasy right now is Sam Laporta. I loved – I think all of us loved his collegiate tape. He comes from tight end university. Um, uh, You know, this is – this is sticky. He's just too out there on the field. And, th- you know, it's funny because the whole rookie sensation tight end of like, oh, Dalton Kincaid is going to come in. The offense needs him. I don't think enough was really credited to Dawson Knox, a good tight end who keeps getting targets, keeps getting end zone targets like these splitting. But Laporta's not. Laporta's also in an offense that could put up 30 points on, you know, the regular. And he is it. He's out there, you know, 80 plus percent of snaps running a ton of routes, you, you got to stay in the flames with them. It's funny seeing the uh, Laporta against, like, Musgrave in Green Bay because if Musgrave had more accurate targets, mm-hmm. he would be right here with Laporta. I think we've seen three or four. Bomb, sit- bomb. wide open bombs. Yeah, just like looking like Gronk, just a, just a fly up the middle of the field. No one's around him, and then whoops. <laughs> He's going to have some games for sure. Yes, but the Laporta targets are what make him a consistent play right now. It was funny because the this performance happened, and then in our dynasty league, the Laporta and Hawkinson manager instantly put Hawkinson on the block. It was like he had made the decision that Laporta was the future. Kelsey scored. Pat Fryermuth got into the end zone. That was yeah. nice to see. George Kittle, the big game. Let's, start of the week. Yeah, yeah, Mister Fryermuth. He got loose. He he had forty one receiving yards, which was um what was more, he at? More than <laughs> more than five. He yeah. can, he now needs he needs uh eight hands, nine hands. <laughs> Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, we do have to talk about the duds because there are decisions to be made, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And uh Justin Fields, we talked about him earlier. It was abysmal. Eleven for twenty two for ninety nine yards. Eleven for forty seven. You know, the, when you talk about what happened last year, like, I get it. Because the, the situation is there where you went from bad to good. So we had that happen. I think teams know how to defend Justin Fields running the football now. I think that's been pretty evident through three weeks. And so now you want to make Justin Fields a passer, and he's, he's failing the test. So you're going to have the Denver matchup. Denver's been a really bad defense. Somebody has to win that game, by the way. Denver, Chicago, someone's coming out with a victory. Who's home? Uh, I think it's Chicago. It is Chicago, yes. So does that change how you look at the game? Not at all. No, I was <laughs> just, I was just curious. I mean, it was, those two teams, man, they are looking putrid. He has the. Uh, this is a shout out to Courtney Cronin who tweeted this to highlight the performance as a quarterback since the start of 2021. Justin Fields has the most starts, nine, with a QBR under 10. From the pocket, he Under posted. 10 is not good. He but posted check a career out. low 1.5 QBR from inside the pocket against Kansas City. This is not going to work. If we are convinced that Zach Wilson's not going to work, which it's not, Justin Fields and Zach Wilson. That yeah, I mean, I I'm not joking when I say Mitch Trubisky should be the starting quarterback for the Bears. Justin Fields. <laughs> I I think we've seen enough to know Justin Fields is not going to work. Um. For sure, he's not going to work for the Bears. He's not going to work as an NFL quarterback. Um, he won't be – if you're in a dynasty league and you've got fields, I Oof. think you wait for a – I think you wait for a big game or two because he'll, he'll have them. And when, when he has a big game, people will be back in. And I think you trade him because long term, I don't think he's the quarterback of the Bears. The Bears have uh, their pick. The Bears have the Carolina pick. Yeah. So they've got multiple options in a draft class with top tier quarterbacks. So if Fields gets replaced this offseason, 
he's probably a future career backup that maybe he'll have a few more starts. But for dynasty purposes, I think he's he's an expiring asset quickly. He's not going to work for fantasy purposes and redraft. I'm still he, he you know Zach Wilson sucks. Zach Wilson doesn't have a superpower of being able to run for 80 uh -huh. yards and two touchdowns on the ground at any point. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the list of quarterbacks. And and if you've been through the Justin Fields experience through three weeks, I'm looking at the list of quarterbacks other than Zach Wilson. And you're a starting quarterback in the NFL. I'm not sure that you're not playing that player over Justin Fields next week, based on based on the experience you've had putting him in your lineup. Because uh, you're, you're probably, probably fair. Baker Mayfield. I think you're playing Baker. What about Desmond Ritter? No. Ah, uh, we got no, you. Yeah, you got, we got, we got okay. him. So Zach Wilson. We got him. No, no, no. Let's do it. Zach Wilson, Desmond Ritter. If if Andy Dalton was playing quarterback next week over Bryce Young, I'm playing him over Justin Fields. See that I I I, I would absolutely not be doing that. I, I still think that the matchup against the Chiefs was a bad one, and that his rushing for fantasy purposes can be great. I'm I realize how it uh, how it feels, and I'm certainly going to be putting in you know all other decent options. You know, if you're telling me that you've got a uh, you know, a Jared Goff or, you know, Deshaun Watson, guys who have struggled a little bit. Oh, I'm bit not playing Tannehill good. either. No, I'll play <laughs> right. Fields over Tannehill. Maybe Sorry. Fields I'm trying to find the list. As, like, we still have, what, four quarterbacks to go. But as of now, he's the quarterback 22. So there were – there's a handful of worse ones. Not a lot. No. But and, some. And, well, and it's 22 on the year, you're saying? Or no, no, no. Last – this – as of this week right now. The four tonight will pass that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there's there's still some. No, no. I look. Words. Jason's right in the respect that if you, there are players that you could play that do not have Justin Fields' ceiling clearly. But I'm worried about that little uh, thing in the brains of fantasy managers, where it's like this could be the week. There have been a handful of players like that, where you, where you just keep waiting and you wait because you've seen the, the the power and the and the big weeks. Maybe Justin Fields it, will figure it out. It is. It is. Do you think he will? It is important to be able to move on. It is one hundred percent important for any fantasy asset to not just. I drafted him high. I loved him. I thought he was going to be great. You've got to be able to move on, and so we we need to make sure you have the freedom to say, "Yeah, I am going to start someone else." He's probably going to have a good game if he's starting among the next four. There's probably going to be one: Minnesota, Las Vegas, Denver. That you can't. And ask. those three are all home. I mean that's that's the so, schedule you want. So one of those is going to be good for sure. Hmm. Tough, tough, tough if decision he's not, with Fields. Yeah, that. I mean, it's really, really hard. Yeah, that. I mean, at Kansas City is a tough matchup. Yes. But two hundred and two starting to be your dream. Trevor Lawrence, what's going on? He's another really difficult one to figure out. Um, he had a really bad matchup against Kansas City. And we know that Houston has been a bad matchup as well, but usually it's because you're up so much you don't have to throw. Houston Houston just beat the snot out of the Jaguars, just dominated them, turned them over uh, several times, and, he, you know, Justin Lor uh, Trevor Lawrence needed to throw the ball, and he didn't do it well. You, you called Trevor Lawrence discount. No, no, no. Or I'm sorry, you called Dak Prescott discount Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, it was. I called Trevor Lawrence expensive Dak. So that means that Kenny Pickett is discount Dak, based Maybe. on Dak being in the duds this yeah. week as well. Very disappointing overall for the whole Cowboys, but for Dak. So Dak was 25 for 42, 49 and one. Tough looking at that matchup, and 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 if he can't, if he's not a guarantee in that one, I you know New England, San Francisco. The next two weeks, Dak is is uh, waiver fodder. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I mean, would you rather start Dak Prescott against the New England Patriots or Justin Fields against the Denver Broncos? I know, <laughs> I know, it's a really, really hard question. The answer is Dak, I, and I would go Fields. I, and I think the, the the answer is probably look to your waivers for a better option than both. I got a a, a tweet going back to Trevor Lawrence, a uh, friend of the show, James Coe. For, he tweeted this out. Calvin Ridley posted 92 yards in the first week, first half of week one. He has 81 yards combined in the 10 quarters following. Yeah, and they, they were missing their top corner. Houston was. Mm -hmm. Super disappointing. And Ridley went down, banged up a couple times. 
This is uh, really disappointing performances from Jacksonville's offense. Yeah. And Trevor Lawrence not taking the step forward. I think we got a little bit uh, – Too hopeful? Well, I, no, I just, just used to it. I mean, like J Jalen Hurts, that was the pick last year. To take the step forward, he did it. Right. Like we've had these quarterbacks take these monumental steps into superstardom. And we're like, man, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, they're they're set up. This has got to be – give them Calvin Ridley, give them DJ Moore. They were already pretty good for fantasy. Let's give them superstar wide receivers. It's starting to – kind of unwind that narrative that's worked so well you know you give digs to josh allen and that worked out yeah no you're, you're AJ brown to jalen hurts you're 100 percent right and now it's a matter of deciding of okay will we look back at the end of the season and say yeah they did they just started yeah. slow yeah, yeah it's exactly still possible. exactly yeah this is this is the time of year where you don't want to, you want to make conclusions when they're actionable for your fantasy league but you also need to stay water and be willing to i mean that's probably I think the best piece of advice for guys like this, guys that you see the path and still could absolutely, for fantasy purposes, be great, you just bench them. You keep them. You don't drop them. You pick them up yeah. off of waivers if they're out there. Yeah. Uh, but you don't play them. You wait and see. Yeah. Uh, running back duds. Big storyline. Yeah. Uh -oh. Derrick Henry. Uh-oh. 11 for 20. Uh-oh. He played 17 snaps? Can I can I hit the button? Yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> Uh oh, I was. It was funny last week. Um, I was worried about him. Uh, you know, I, I I brought up the fact that he was actually splitting carries, and man, this last week was terrible. You went into halftime with a total of negative seven rushing yards. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not good. He had no targets. He had. 11 carries for 20 total yards. And is, he hurt? is he hurt? Well, he was I mean, on the... Yeah, he was on the... <laughs> yeah, he was on the injury report for the toe slash rest. Oh, that's right. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't understand the recipe for them having any success in, in all of history with Derrick Henry has been to give him a million carries. Which they did in week two against the Chargers, 25 carries, So what do you what do you do? Is this a full, like, this is not a buy, this is not a sell? This is, I... Because I, I don't, I don't know. I, I believe if Cleveland's I had good, him, like yeah, it, it's a tough, it's a tough defensive front. If I have Henry, I am holding. I'm just gonna stay the course, but readjusting how I'm looking at Derrick Henry. It's, it's no longer, yes, week in and week out, this guy should be top ten, top fifteen at the worst. No, it's game script. It, like they have, they have another option now. They have. Tajay Spears, they've, they've never had a true running back who can come in and replace Derrick Henry, and they have a guy who has a three-down skill set who they are using when they need to catch up. So it's uh, we, we know that when you're like the the grinder, the two, the down one, down two rusher, you have ebbs and flows because of game script, but Henry has been able to kind of buck that trend. But he's I think he's right back into that now. I, it's it's really, really difficult. He's just he's like a he's an RB two. But yeah. running backs stink for fantasy in general. I think that if you have Derrick Henry and I think you need to shop him for a premium and hope someone is paying and saying, Hey man, I can get Derrick freaking Henry for my team because he had a bad game. I'm gonna go try to get him. I what we what we've said about Derrick Henry for the last couple of years is really what happens with these Elder statement running backs is usually when it's over, it's over. I, I you don't see them take a a season where it's like ah oh, he was like he was like eighty five percent of himself on his way towards retirement. Usually things go badly for their final season and they end up really really disappointing. And so this is this is think, like to me a a, a a marker that says this could be the beginning of the end. They actually have Tajay Spears there. He's, you know, Tajay Spears out snapped him by 10 this last week. If there's the chance that I can get a lot for him, not, not, I'm not saying you got to punt him off a bridge, but I would be shopping Derrick Henry to see if I can capitalize on him and have someone else hold the bag. Cause it looks like, it looks like, what the about bag winter coming? Might be full of poop. And that's the, that's the story. <laughs> that, that's the story. That, might be he was finishing his sentence that, <laughs> but, and the end of the sentence was might be full of poop. But then I asked him whether winter was coming, and he would not allow the end of the sentence. 
<laughs> to not be completed. I think that's the story you got to sell to others is that winter is coming. Yeah, but what do you do with the like there are some really hilarious trade offers that could be there. For instance, who do you want, Raheem Mostert or Derrick Henry? Mostert. Okay, so then you're turning that down? You would not go out and shop Raheem Mostert for Derrick Henry or Kyron Williams. Kyron. Zach Moss? No. Zach Moss still has yeah, I would take the Henry Jonathan Zach Taylor Moss. lingerer. Man, they are. I mean, they, they, this is that's the hardest thing is to sell high on a, a, a player like Mostert. Because you're he's number one. He's the number one running back on the number one offense and yeah. the number one fantasy running back. And what you said earlier, when I heard you describing A chain and why you'd play him against Buffalo, you're like, Oh, it just takes one play. It's like mm -hmm. that's Mostert too. Yes, yep. it is. They're both rocket ships. And Mostert, unlike A chain, when other players come back, if Jeff Wilson gets back, if uh Ahmed comes back. Der Raheem Mostert is the starter. He's the one. A-Chain might be the three. We don't know yet. Right. Uh, Bijan, hugely disappointing performance. If you want to – when I spin that wheel of shame later this week, you can look, glance in Bijan's direction because 10 for 33 on the ground and then 4 for 27 through the year, huge letdown performance for – uh, It was. And I'm not going to bet against Bijan ever, but Detroit, yeah, they and shut and down Kyle, running backs. Kyle's on the microphone, right? I'm here. And whose fault is this, you said? Is Ritter. Ritter. <laughs> Desmond Ritter. Uh, the future of your franchise? Definitely not. Okay. Uh, Algier. What in the world? Is this a... Uh... The snaps were up for Bijan. Uh, this is... Yeah, Bijan. In week, in week one where... Uh, I, they were up in week two, though, too. So, Tyler Algier's a real concern. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Of the, the week one... Tyler Algier with hindsight looks like that could have been a trap for Algier. I, I don't. I don't think it's just a trap necessarily. I, I think what happened in Week One was that it was a game script where they dominated. They were up fourteen points on Carolina. I, yeah. In games where they're up, they are going to have so many carries that even if Bijan is seventy percent of the market share, Tyler Algier will end the game with fifteen carries. So are you playing matchups then? I am playing matchups. So uh, upcoming Jacksonville, Houston, those hey, are okay. those are games where I think Algier will be, uh, you know, an, an okay RB two flex option. But for sure, this is Bijan's backfield. I mean, we knew coming. This is why I wanted to play A chain over Algier because the Detroit Lions they don't give up hardly anything to running backs, and you don't want the backup in a situation in a bad matchup. What are you going to be doing moving forward in terms of having more courage? I'm going to just try to look in the mirror <laughs> and do one of those, you know, oh, you could man. do, you got this. What about like visiting a wizard? Uh, yeah, certainly. I, I mean, it, you know. Like a Kevin kind of a. <laughs> really go get that courage, you know? Wow. Oh, okay. I got you. It took me a second to know. I thought. Um, <laughs> a Wookiee? Yeah, I thought it was a Wookiee. But Bookies that already was have Chewbacca. What is Chewbacca's already here? got courage. They're built in with a lot yeah, of courage. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> Ramondre Stevenson, just 19 for 59 against the Jets. Keep playing him. Yep. yep. Josh Kelly, cool. it, this was as bad as it gets. He is officially the, not it. Uh, 11 for 12. I do this for a living. I was mad that I hadn't invested more fab on Josh Kelly when the news came out that Austin Eckler was going to be out longer term. I feel blessed that I didn't yeah. do that. Yeah, I really thought that Joshua Kelly would have a bounce back week. He did look good in, in that week, right? No, he that was a really did. That was a yes, real no, thing, it, right? It really did happen, and it 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 allowed me to be tricked for another week, as I thought Josh Kelly against Minnesota with the over under. I mean, there was points galore in this match, but it was the Chargers looked at their situation. We gave the the neutral script. Uh, pass rate, it skyrocketed. And they said, no, we're not going to run the ball. He was on the field for 73% of snaps. 73. Got 11 carries on one target. It's This is why, look, insurance running backs, it it can be very difficult. Because when, when it hits, it feels really great. But when it does not hit, which it usually does not, it feels very bad. Yeah, I mean, if he had a nickname, it would be um, Stuffed. That's a, that's a terrible yeah. performance on a game when you put up four hundred something yards. Khalil Herbert, he just he doesn't get work. So 
and it's an even split. This is, you know, him and Roshan are are really sharing time. Two halves of a nasty pie. Yeah, yep. exactly. I mean, you've got the Denver matchup, but I can't imagine you want to start either. You can't possibly have confidence starting a Chicago backfield player right now. Yeah, I, do, I agree with Mike's sentiment that I think Herbert's a good player, but this situation, I mean, look at Brees Hall. Two, yeah. straight, two straight weeks for Brees Hall where he is not, I mean, it, Jeremy is over there shaking his head and just because what are you doing with Brees Hall now starting him okay. yeah hey, I think so he I plays mean, Kansas City next week that didn't go well for Cleo Herbert a minute ago yeah it's not good <laughs> I mean Brees Hall was 12 for 18 yeah you here's what you do you do what we would all do if we were playing the video game and facing Zach Wilson you stop Brees Hall and you win the game yeah yeah put all your guys there <laughs> I mean every, Say, hey Zach I dare you check out how open these receivers are Play. Go throw Cover it. zero every play. Garrett Wilson was five for 48. Let's move into wide receivers. All right. Garrett Wilson, uh, nine targets, five for 48. I mean, you still play Garrett Wilson, right? Yeah, he, he is it's, he is a weekly decision depending on what you have. It's difficult. I had a roster. Adam Thielen <laughs> I had Garrett a, Wilson. Oh, man. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean by it's, yes! it's ridiculously difficult. It, you play me. Adam Thielen. Oh, I like um, this new voice. Thank you for fixing this, Jason. <clears throat> there was just something in my voice. <laughs> oh, baby. I'm not old. This I'm is, awesome. Adam Thielen sounds awesome. I'll be back. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Um, Garrett Wilson, disappointing. Drake London, two for 31. That's just part of the that's recipe. Just, that's the Falcons offense. Uh, Hopkins, three for 48. Doesn't seem to have it anymore. Slash oh, that is Tannehill doesn't another, have it anymore. That, 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 I didn't even bring this up, but I meant to. When talking about m me being willing to really try to trade Derrick Henry and go get one of those other players, is that not only is it the age and the, the history of like usually the wheels fall off and we see a little bit of red flags, but he is a guy that is good when his team wins. The Titans and Tannehill just don't look like that. They don't look like a team that's going to say, hey, Derrick Henry, you're going to be the top three running back rest of the season because we're going to win a ton of games and give you 30 carries every game. Just doesn't seem like that's what the recipe is going forward. Yeah, and uh, not a good game. Tyler Lockett, three for 34, disappointing. Calvin Ridley, yeah. three for 40, disappointing. Uh, I need I need you guys to weigh in here. Um, the Manders? Yeah, the Manders offense in general. I mean – Terry McLaurin, 6 for 41. You got the 6. PPR, you're probably happy-ish. Jahan Dodson, 2 for 21. Sam Howell was sacked nine times. He threw four interceptions. When he threw those interceptions, and I'm going to give the Buffalo Bills all the credit in the world, but his when he throws the interceptions, there's something missing from the, the throw. Like it, it, It's coming out of his hand slower or something is going on because these were ugly. I mean, we looked at these and we were like, what? It is. What are you doing? It is absolutely absurd that Jahan Dotson, as a rookie, put up the numbers that he did, and now we're looking at a guy with a total of eighty-three yards on the season through three weeks. Like, are you done? Something. I I think you have to be. Is this done. Jahan Dotson? I, I think you got to put him on the bench. I mean, would it surprise you guys if that? Uh, I mean, I guess they won their first two games. Like, a they play Philadelphia. If they weren't two and one, that performance right there, that would have run like the way that Ron Rivera handles quarterbacks. That would have been it. it Jacoby would, Brissett. We would, be we would have had Jacoby Brissett next week, but they are still two and one. They're going to be uh, two and two heading into Week Five against Chicago. So that'll be. Would you change situation. your like? If l let's put it this way, Mike. I'm not positive Sam Howell doesn't get benched now. I'm not not it's, it is Ron possible. Rivera's patience at That's quarterback is ridiculous. But if the change happened, would you have renewed interest in McLaurin yes. and Dotson? Yeah. I mean McLaurin at least, seems safer. At least for one like one week. Let's we still have to see how Baker does against these Philadelphia Eagles, but like he should succeed. They people have been succeeding. So if, like if Baker and the Bucks do like anything average of like good fantasy output for for wide receivers with Jacoby, you'd feel I'd feel confident enough to put him back in. All right. Well, we'll talk more about the drop decision for these guys tomorrow. I don't want to linger there today because, like, the Drake Londons and Jahan Dotsons, those are guys that yep. decisions will be made for some of the free agent pickups, and that story is going to be the Devon A-Chain story. Tight ends, uh, Mark Andrews has not got it going, and they lost. And I, you yep. can't help but look at this situation and say, 
those are correlated, right? Like Mark Andrews is either not 100% or they're making these – like Todd Monken's making decisions on this offense that are not making sense because Mark Andrews, four for 35, that's not enough. No. I, watching it, I, I think that Lamar or that uh, Mark Andrews is still not fully healthy. Like Lamar, in terms of just as a passer, he is completing 73% of his attempts. This, he was 22 of 31, that's 71%. Over 200 yards, Odo Beckham wasn't there. Now, I, I mean, I know like Zay Flowers is soaking up a lot of cheap, easy targets, but the point is, how when Beckham was out, and it was just Flowers and Andrews as your two top weapons, how did Mark Andrews only see five targets? This, this offense is is putrid right now. You 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 know the the 70 plus percent is irrelevant when you're talking about 6.5 yards per attempt. That is, yeah, if Zay Flowers was, I believe, eight for forty-eight, which yeah. is six a catch, unleash him. It, it's it's really, I mean, right now the Monken offense is not clicking. It's not working. Um, it's been one of the most disappointing big storylines from the offseason. Obviously, with a new system and talented players, I think everyone thinks Lamar Jackson is a talented quarterback. We know Mark Andrews is a talented tight end. Zay Flowers looks like a talented rookie. You want them to right the ship. And it can happen, but right now you have to you have to assume that what you've seen is what's going to continue. The matchup coming up is in Cleveland against the Browns, whose defense looks so legitimate. Oh, they're number one in everything. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, and then they go on the road to Pittsburgh. That's it's it, maybe I think no it's, Rashad Bateman. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bad couple of weeks here. Now, Mark Andrews, you're going to start him every week. He's a tight end. You don't, po you know, if maybe if you have Laporta. You could make a decision, but outside of that, you're you're starting Mark Andrews every week, and he's still got a chance for a touchdown. I had one last week. I thought that Andrews returning would drop the short area targets for Zay Flowers, and it seems like the short area targets for Zay Flowers That's shorter are shorter <laughs> and hurting Andrews a little bit. Yeah, um, but yeah, that offense has been disappointing, and people came in saying, "Oh, the wide receivers, they're so much better." Beckham's hurt. Bateman's hurt. They're neither of them were proven. Neither of them are on the field. Yeah. So Nelson Aguilar is like going to have to play a role on this roster. Uh, I almost said bounce back. What's the opposite of a bounce back? What would you say? How would you describe that? A s splat. Yeah, you just don't splat, bounce splat. off the ground. You just go <laughs> curse splat. So a splat. Uh, Hunter Henry with a splat. Yep. Two for seventeen. Um, David Njoku probably time to move on. It hasn't happened. Kyle Pitts nine targets. Yeah. Honestly, five for forty one is pretty good for Kyle Pitts, baby. Yeah, and Zach Ertz, uh, <laughs> nothing for Zach Ertz or Trey McBride. The offense in Arizona was uh, Rondell Moore and Hollywood Brown and Michael Wilson. The so, the routes for Ertz have come down each of the three weeks. Okay. So it, he, it could be it, – Change in philosophy it, it could, from yeah, the first few weeks? It could be. Uh, Michael Wilson's a rookie, right? You're going to involve him more as time goes on. And Zach Ertz, they did try to give him one of those uh, – like that little inside – pitch around the goal line yeah. he, amazingly he did not quite get <laughs> yards, into yards the end after zone. catch Ertz always been known his whole career for yards after catch we uh, have i believe to. it's always been no that's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the we, yards we, after catch we have to turn the page we've got to close this one down but tomorrow's a huge show it's a waiver show mm -hmm. so more discussions on these players more decisions to be made and we got two monday night football games that we will be watching well i'll be watching one at a time mike you for a for a man who watches nine games on nine televisions uh -huh. on a weekly basis, you do a lot of complaining about two games on one night. Because I don't have the room sit situation. You can stay here at the studio. I cannot. What if you have one game on the left four TVs, one game on the right <laughs> four TVs? That would be great. And then great. you could watch one of your favorite movies in the middle. Oh, I could pick yeah, a movie? Yeah, you can hang out. Like you I can put, put a movie Die Hard in, in the put middle? Put a movie on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, lots more to talk about tomorrow. Please join us. In the meantime, head over to FootClanGiveaway.com. Got some good stuff over there. Talk to you soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.